Go figure. Welcome to the Animal Control Report with your hosts. Who? Ashley Bishop. That's weird. It didn't come through the first time. You're, you're weird. Internet. You know, it's that internet up there in Wisconsin. <laughs> and, I'm, <laughs> and, and I'm Daniel Ettinger, and I don't have cows messing with my Wi-Fi right now, so I'm good. You know what? Happy cows come from Wisconsin, not California. <laughs> Thanks for watching or listening and doing all the stuff for the Animal Control Report. We're happy to have you here today. It is episode 212, and uh, that's a lot of episodes I'm tired. I don't sleep anymore, Bishop. I know you don't sleep anymore. How are how are things? How are you healing up? Uh, well, well, but uh, I don't know. I'm getting there. I'm still on light duty. Yeah, just doing all that light duty stuff. Holding papers. Well, please check out our website, keepinghumane.com. You can also check out our Instagram, our Facebook page, our TikTok. Uh, some of those are Keep It Humane, some of those are Animal Control Report. So just throw in both of those and you'll find a lot of different things. You might find things about happy cows in Wisconsin. Really quick, we want to thank our sponsor, Tomahawk Live Trap. Tomahawk Live Trap exceeds customers' expectations by providing them with the highest quality, humane animal control products available. Check out that new Pro Series Gravity Door Trap. They feature a door that sets automatically when you when you open it so that no hook, no plate needed whatsoever you just open the door and then you get a dog in there like my dog who's going crazy in the background use discount code keep it humane that's discount code keep it humane for 10 percent off your order at livetrap.com so check that out as well as soon as you can and also check out our network partners our keep it humane uh, podcast network peeps that is keep it humane.com forward slash podcast network so when you have time check that out there's also a couple things i want to talk about did you know? I know this is, we're recording in February. Uh, this will air in like, what's today? February 4th. So this will air February 6th. Ma and Dan can math. I can math. Uh, Animal Control Officer Appreciation Week is like two months away. And it seems like every year we wait until about like April 1st to be like, oh, guess what's happening in two weeks? Mm -mm. We're not doing that anymore. We're we're So we're collecting... Basically, any videos, photos, stories, just positive things. Because what I'm, what I'm going to do, well, I don't want to give it away, away, but there's going to be something special every day uh, for that week, and I want to make sure that we collect that stuff now. So, uh, thinking in advance, pre-planning, Bishop. Mark it on your calendars. <laughs> Dan so, doesn't do this. <laughs> so, get us, please, get us. And seriously, uh, anything you want to have recognized. Uh, from your team, from you individually. Uh, there might even be special things given away. Uh, we redid our logos. So uh, hint, hint, you might get some free merch uh, if you participate or, or free free swag. Swag? Swag. Swag. Uh, so please check that out. Uh, oh. <laughs> how do they do that? That's Big a great question. Like wagging your tail? Swag. <laughs> how do they do it? You can uh, either, you can email me, Daniel at keepithumane.com or you can send messages through any of the social platforms so instagram or facebook and once we get them we'll collect them and then put everything together so please participate uh, that's one thing that you know we want more of in this profession is uh the you know the community yes all right bishop that's a lot a lot for me what do you got going on Frustrating situation work-wise up here. Talk about it. I, back in 2018, had a case that should have been a felony. Um, rabbits cannibalized each other. Ugh. Like, broke through wires to cannibalize each other. Um, dog's tail had to be docked because it's exposed and dead because it wasn't treated. Judge dismissed the case. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got a blip. Yeah, you're, um, you, judge... are, you are a little um, blippy today. <laughs> For our listeners, Bishop <laughs> Ashley Blippy is is on the, on the, the new co-host. Right. <laughs> we'll work through it. 
You look great. Um, you look great. So, I mean, but you're a little blippy. Um, the judge dismissed the case because he didn't want a felony on a 19 year old's uh, record. Wow. And Friday, we got another no, complaint he's... about this person where they didn't know that their cat was dead in their house for two days. So I'm frustrated with our our system up here because this could have been prevented. Yeah, it sounds like it. So uh, we'll table that for another another episode because yeah. that that sounds frustrating. Uh, I don't know how I'm yeah. going to transition into good news, but we're going to do that. <laughs> we're, we are going to introduce <laughs> our guest Kelly Forrester with Black Ops Rescue. I'm excited to have Kelly. Kelly and I go way back, like uh summer of 2010 i believe is when i first met you kelly welcome to the animal control report thanks for having me it's great to be here and talk to you guys sorry we had to put you through that stuff in the beginning yeah. about some of the horrible news you do have so sorry <laughs> well with kelly the cool thing about kelly, she has animal shelter background animal shelter experience so uh yeah. it's not anything that's probably brand new to her but it's still not you know, not great to listen to. I know that. So, uh, Kelly, I, you are currently the executive direct director. I can talk with the Black Hawk, Black Hawk. Wow, Black Ops Rescue. Um, and so, what it is, uniting veterans with shelter pets uh, to create a lifelong bond, mutual hope, and healing. That's I think that's the mission there. Uh, can you talk just briefly? I want to get a couple things. I want to know all about this. I, I love that that this this exists and, and we're doing some great work for them, but can you let our listeners know kind of how you got into animal welfare and then how you got to this point where you're able to, to help connect people uh, with animals that, that need them? Um, so I think I started volunteering when I was about 16. Uh, so two two at years local... ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> with one of our local veterinary offices and just kept volunteering throughout the, um, my youth. And then at about 34, I realized I was spending all of my free time at animal shelters. And why didn't I just try to get a job at an animal shelter since that's where I really enjoyed being. So my first position was as a uh, volunteer assistant at the Denver Dumb Friends League, which was great. Uh, shout out to Jody Schultz, who saw something in me and hired me. And I was there for a couple of years, and then Adams County Animal Shelter was starting a volunteer program and needed somebody to pilot the program. And I thought that was a really exciting opportunity to start a program and get it up and running. And so I shifted over to Adams County. I was there for a little over 10 years. So that's where most of my background lies. And then off and on, uh, I worked with Long White Humane for a little bit, but it was about 2017 when it really came to fruition that I wanted to do my own thing. Um, wasn't exactly sure what that looked like, but I knew I wanted to start my own rescue and uh, happened to be in a relationship with my now husband, who was a 10-year Army veteran. And one of the things that I noticed that even on days when he was really struggling with PTSD symptoms, he was still able to get the dogs out for a walk around the block. And it kind of clicked. I thought, hey, there's got to be a lot more guys and gals out there who have this same issue and who could really benefit from the unconditional love of a pet. So uh, he and our other co-founder, Nicole Shimming, we all got together and started mapping this out trying to figure out what it was going to look like. And here we are almost six years later and just growing and getting the word out and hopefully, you know, being able to get more pets into the arms of veterans. Really quick, I want people to know the, the website is Black Ops Rescue. Again, blackopsrescue.org. They can go there and check everything out about it. So really like in a nutshell, it sounds like you pair pets with veterans. I mean, is that kind of the, the quick and easy pitch there? That is the quick and easy pitch. Uh, one of the things that makes us unique, though, is we kind of work in reverse of a traditional rescue. So I don't have a pool of animals waiting for 
an adopter. I don't have a pool of animals waiting for a veteran. I have a pool of veterans waiting for a pet. So we act more like, almost like a matchmaking service. So we interview our veteran client first and really drill down in great detail on what their wants and needs and capabilities are. And then we go to our network of rescue and shelter partners and find the perfect match for them. So some of these animals are coming from potentially uh, trauma themselves or from being out and loose. Do you know offhand how many veterans you've been able to help with us so far? Um, so we're we're still pretty small. Right now, we just did our 35th adoption. Um, okay. One of the things that we've really built into it is sustainable growth. We're a very high touch organization. So we don't just have, we don't say, you know, here's your pet, good luck. Um, we maintain an ongoing relationship with our veterans and their pets. So our veterans can reach out to us at any time. We do regular check-ins with them. Um, and it's always no charge to our veterans. So the veterans never pay anything. So we're kind of high quality, high touch, and we're really trying to make sure that we were sustainable because being in animal welfare for as long as I was, I saw a lot of rescues come and go. You know, they start off with the best of intentions and then they quickly get overwhelmed because the need is so great. So one of the things that I think kind of sets us apart is we've built ourselves for sustainable growth. When you say that they don't pay anything, is that just for initial costs or is that for the lifetime of the pet? So initial costs is definitely zero. Uh, we pay all the adoption fees. We get them all the supplies. So leashes, collars, bowls, crates, beds, litter boxes, whatever they need. Um, and then we will also pay for training and we'll pay for any medical needs that arise up to right now about $2,000. So we wow. cover all okay. those initial costs and then each veteran has a $2,000 fund that they can draw on for whatever they might need. Um, that said, we hope to increase that in the future. And we have had some pets that have needed some more extensive medical care. We just did a dental on a Chihuahua and you guys know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> that took your 2000 right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was close to awesome. it. Um, so whenever we have anything like that, that's more extensive, then I just go to my board and my board is generally really good about approving that need. Kelly, this, uh, you we need to pause really quick and celebrate this. Uh, how long has this been around? We'll be six years old in May. Okay. That is incredible. Um, uh, and I know, I mean, you kind of came across like, oh, well, it's only been a few people that like helping one person is making a difference. Helping 30, you know, helping 50, helping a hundred uh, that, you know, those are, those are milestones that you'll get to. And I just want to celebrate the fact that this exists. I have the, mm -hmm. I have the, um, I'm blessed to be able to go and, and, and work with the military every quarter. Uh, I go to Missouri, not Wisconsin, even though I want to. Um, I go to Missouri and I, I meet a lot of people in the service. Uh, I never I never was in the service myself, but this is something that uh, well, I learned a lot from that. I've been doing it now almost five years and I've, I've learned a lot from everybody I meet and such a an amazing uh, group of individuals. And, and I think knowing that this exists, if you're okay with that, I would love to um, promote it in those workshops uh, just to get it out there in front of them. Just because I think the more people that you can reach, the, the better that we're, we're going to do long-term for people and animals. And, and one of the, the things that we recoined this year on the program is help people help animals. And it sounds like you're doing that. So I just wanted to take a quick second and say thank you for all the awesome work that you're putting in and doing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. It's it's definitely very, very rewarding. Um, it was it's funny when we started this, a lot of people, like all the people I reached out to who were sort of experts, um, said, Well, you have to charge. You have you have to charge something. You can't you can't just do this for free for our veterans. Um, and a lot of veterans don't believe it's free. You know, they call me up and they're like, Really? You know, what's the catch? Um, but we definitely feel as if they've paid enough. 
you know, yeah. they paid in blood, sweat, and tears, and, you know, their lives, sometimes their limbs, their relationships, and so we don't ever want to charge our veterans a dime. So can we ask, I mean, it's a nonprofit, how is it funded? Mostly through private donations. Okay. Uh, we did just get our first couple of kind of significant grants coming in, but mostly it's it's small donors, you know, 5K or less. Um, and mostly, you know, $25 here, $50 there, $100 there. Okay. We do go out to events. Um, but just last year, we got our first grant from the Colorado Veterans Association, um, which was 15K, which was great. Um, and we've been using that. And we just got our first large donor who came in uh, with with a very nice donation of, of 50K just recently. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Well, our yeah. listeners, they could go to blackopsrescue.org forward slash donate. And like you said, 15, 20, 50 bucks there. That helps. Like that helps. That's that all adds yeah. up. This is cool stuff. Like that's a bag I, of food minimum. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is really cool. And I think everybody listening, everybody listening probably knows somebody that's a veteran. Yeah. You Several. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, go ahead, Bishop. <clears throat> I was going to say, is this open to anybody in the country? Is this open to only people in Colorado right now and maybe looking to expand? Like who can, as, as a veteran looking to, um, get a pet and and be ma that match be made who is it open to so like i said right now we're still pretty small um we our area of operations is right now kind of the colorado front range we are looking to expand to the entire state within the next short time frame um but there are also some great organizations nationally that help out veterans. They don't do exactly what we do, but Pets for Vets is the one that probably people have heard of on the national level. Um, they don't cover the entire country, but they do cover a good portion. And there's another really great organization called um, Pits for Patriots, <laughs> like which that. specifically does bully breed adoptions. So there's a couple other good organizations out there, but yeah, we would, we would love to within the next year or so be able to cover the entire state of Colorado, but it's, it's building that base, right? It's, it's building your networks. It's building your volunteer base. It's building your stakeholders because we never want to sacrifice, you know, quality for quantity because we are so high touch. You know, um, yeah. most of the stuff that we get, you know, we do get donations, which is great. We have a, um, a wish list on Chewy and wish list on Amazon. Those things are great. Um, but we do feel like, you know, when we give our veteran all of their supplies. So when we do adoption day, we show up like Santa Claus. So we show up with the pet, we show up with, you know, the crate, the bed, the leashes, the collars. And so we want to make sure that the stuff that they're getting is our quality items. They don't necessarily have to be brand new, but they do have to be in good shape. We work with a couple of different local businesses because we deeply believe in supporting our local businesses too. So like we work with a company out of Steamboat Springs called Leashes by Liz, which makes these great paracord style, beautiful, uh, really, really functional leashes and collars. So we do stuff like that too, to help build up others in our community. I'm going to the website That's now just, awesome. just to check it out. I and mean, then I'm going to give it to our listeners too, because it's anybody can get it leashes by Liz. So just as it sounds leashes by Liz, L I Z.com. Uh, and yeah, they, fantastic, fantastic. Leashes. They look super cool. I might have to order. Ooh, <laughs> they have one. Of, so as a runner, um, well, as a, somebody that will run again soon, the, one of the first things <laughs> I see, I got injured, uh, Kelly, I tore my ACL, but one of the first thing I see is they have the, the, um, the clip the double clip so clip on both ends so you clip to the dog and then clip to my runner belt oh yeah i'm going in let's go um mm -hmm. <laughs> i might be on this website for a little bit while, while we're doing the interview so i apologize <laughs> kelly i want to transition into a couple things and we can definitely get back to black ops i i think that what what you're doing is absolutely phenomenal and i'm excited to to learn more about it i think uh again how we can help people we can help animals uh, one of the things I want to get back to, and I'm going to put it out there now, is the process of how we pair the animals. 
uh, but we'll go back there because really where we're going now is your your experience in, in history uh, with working in animal shelters. When, when did you leave? When was the last like time you worked in a shelter setting? Uh, 2022 was the last time I worked in a shelter setting. So really recently. So what was what were some of the things that you were seeing that um, maybe were challenges and successes? Like what what where can you hang your hat on? Like this was great, uh, and then where can we improve as an overall uh, industry? First of all, you know I definitely want to say thank you to all of the people who work in shelters. Um, it's really tough right now. Everybody's full across the country. Everybody's overflowing. Um, and that has a lot to do, I think, with how we view animals in this country as somewhat disposable, um, but also, you know, the economy, even though the economy looks great on paper, everything is costing more, right? Mm -hmm. So it reminds me a lot of 2008, kind of when the housing bubble burst and shelters just got filled up. So I think that resourcing your shelters you know, making it a community hub is hugely important. And I got some firsthand experience of this. You know, Daniel and I worked at what was then the Adams County Animal Shelter um, back in 2010, which was a municipal shelter, but we, we were working out of a converted warehouse. You know, it wasn't built to be a shelter. It was, <laughs> you remember. <laughs> oh, I re yeah, uh, yeah. You know, but that's that's just kind of, you know, that's what we had to work with. So that's what we worked with. Yeah. Um, luckily, the county commissioners decided that something needed to change. And they have a beautiful new shelter called Riverdale Animal Shelter um, that's very well funded. It's built to be a shelter. It's it's a gorgeous facility. Like it's a nice place just to even go and visit. Um, parents bring their kids there on Sundays. So I think that getting that community buy-in to, you know, understand that, yeah, this is the animal shelter, but it affects quality of life in the entire community. Because if you don't have a good shelter that's well-funded and well-staffed and able to offer a wide variety of services, you know, you're going to have more people not caring their, about their animals, you know, because they don't have the education to know what it really takes to, to, give an animal a good life. You're gonna have more people dumping their animals as strays because they don't know about the option of the shelter. So I think that community support and funding and making sure your local shelters are well-resourced and embraced by the community is, is huge. It's the most important thing. I, I absolutely agree. And I think as we continue to grow as a profession, or that's not the right way, a grow as a community, I think animal welfare, uh, we need to do more of that. We need a succession plan, but we also need to embrace what's happening now and uh, resourcing um, is so important. I absolutely couldn't agree more. If you had a magic wand, we could just wave that over the, over the animal welfare industry. Uh, what would, what would you gift all of, all of us? Like if everybody, in the per or not like individually, but like, what would you gift us? Ooh, I only get one wish. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not three. It's usually three, Dan. Do I look I know like you don't a watch genie? Movies. Do I? Do I? <laughs> wait, wait, Bishop. <laughs> you can watch that on YouTube. Just look for the Animal Control Report. Okay. Um, I I think it it all starts with compassion. And when I say that, I don't just mean compassion for the animals. When I was volunteer manager at Adams County, our, our mantra was compassion in action. So it's not, it's great if you have a heart for animals, but everybody has to do something. So it's wonderful to have compassion for pets that are homeless, for pets that are in a shelter, for pets that are on the street. Um, but you also need to have compassion for the people who can't necessarily afford to go to a veterinarian every time their pet needs something you need to have compassion for the people who work in a shelter environment. Um, you need to have compassion for the animal control officers who are out there on the streets every day, you know, dealing with 
the problem of pet overpopulation in this country firsthand. You know, when I worked in the shelter, I always said the animal control officers were the rock stars. You guys are the rock stars. You know, you're the boots on the ground that are out there every day making a difference and saving lives. But yeah, it's sort of that overarching theme of, you know, how can we all work together to make our individual communities and our country as a whole better for the animals that we all love. I like that. Yeah. And I think part of it too, I think you encompassed a lot of it, but also the compassion of the lawmakers. Mm. Like they need to, to find that compassion for animals and people. Look at you a taking bit. it a step further, but I love that. I think, mm -hmm. I, I think cause there a lot of, from the, from our side of it. And I think how you opened the show, Ashley, it's kind of like, Hey, where are we at? Like we're trying to make a difference. And then you're, you're reverting or letting people, you know, continue their behavior by not holding them accountable. So it's an yeah. interesting statement. Interesting. All right. Let's, I, 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 yeah, go ahead. I was just, I say, yeah, I think that's you no, know, where we got really lucky with the Adams County Animal Shelter in Colorado was our commissioners did come out and they did see firsthand that we didn't have the tools that we needed. We didn't have the resources that they need, that we needed. And then they didn't just let that lie. You know, they, they said, okay, we need to make this better. We need to make a difference. What can we do? Um, and, you know, they developed a five-year plan and now there's a beautiful new shelter facility. So, can you, can you um, walk me through it really quick? I never got a chance to see it before I left Colorado. I saw, I saw the build one day. I remember shout out to, to Denver animal protection. I had to go up to Adams County for something. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, since I'm here, I might as well just take a little detour. Um, I think I had to like drop something off at the old shelter and they were building the new one. And I went over there. Is, isn't there like a little pond or something right by it? I, like, it, I remember. Yeah, it's a, beautiful facility they they put it on a, a large piece of land that the county owns that's part of the adams county fairgrounds there are lakes there are walking trails um, the shelter itself is state of the art the, you know you walk into the lobby and there's a giant touch screen where you can search for pets um, the kennels are beautiful they're easy to clean they're easy to care for They've got some wonderful sort of interior courtyard spaces where you can visit with animals, where employees can just take a break and decompress. Um, because as we all know, it's it's an extremely stressful job working in a shelter. It's very emotionally taxing. So they've just got an amazing space. It's huge. And I have heard although not confirmed that they're actually building a barn so that they can do more with uh, some of the different farm animals that occasionally come in because parts of Adams County are still very rural. So we always had like the chickens and the goats would show up and we could kind of accommodate them in dog kennels, but they're <laughs> actually going to be building a barn for more of those type of, of animals that come in. Hmm. That's not something you hear often, but that's really cool because, I mean, I'm up here in Wisconsin and we have our farm animals, but I'm also very urbanized in my jurisdiction. However, we always, it seems like every couple of years have a pig. I mean, and I, why I, wouldn't you have a pig running loose? I think loose? too, Bishop, if, <laughs> if it was like, if it came down to it and you had a call for service and there was like a loose cow, you would just take it home. You put it in your backyard or something until you can find the owner. That would be illegal, but we have had cows in the city because they got <laughs> loose and they walked down from a mile up the road. Wow. I love <laughs> that. We've had it happen. <laughs> we just had a stray horse here in Adams County recently just that went around. unclaimed. Yeah. yeah, just walking around. Yeah. <laughs> unclaimed even. Wow. Unclaimed. Mm -hmm. well, all right. Before, before we jump into... Uh, the process of black ops and like how how it actually works like when you start pairing animals with the veterans can you please introduce us to the cat on the on the chair behind you because i'm just in love with this cat <laughs> chilling back there uh, that is um delilah jane but her performing name is Dee, Dee love <laughs> she's about She's about 15 years old and she is from Adams County. She came in with a, a litter of strays and she bit, even as a kitten, she bit everyone but me. So 
So of course I had to take her home. Um, so yeah, she's about 15 now. And obviously she lives a very queenly life. <laughs> now, is that her dinosaur on top of the chair? What's going on with that? We got to, oh, <laughs> we got to, we got to uncover that. So um, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, <laughs> um, but no, that that was my dinosaur. I uh, that's probably my weird little nerdy thing. I have a huge fascination with dinosaurs. Nothing wrong with that. Bishop's extremely nerdy. She plays with like ghosts <laughs> or something. No, Ficti fictional characters. Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, okay. that's all you have to okay. say. Most people know what that is. <laughs> It's coming back around, Dan. It's coming back around. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I have, I have a little dinosaur thing. So if you were able to see more of the room, um, there's actually like dinosaurs in all of my potted plants and stuff. And and of course, everybody knows this about me. So everyone gives me more dinosaurs. So yeah, the dinosaur right. is mine. <laughs> Free association time really quick. Favorite dinosaur? Oh, Quetzalcoatlus. What the, why? What is that? <laughs> So, and you're Google. Gonna, I gotta Google it. Yep. What's, yeah, you're gonna what, have to look it up. What's Quetzalcoatlus? What? Quetzalcoatlus. So it's Q U E T Z A L C O A T L U S. Got it. Um, it was one of the largest winged dinosaurs ever. Um, yeah, they're just they're just. I love the idea of. of giant flying raptors oh and that's goodness. just fascinating to me i feel like this could be a character in dungeons and dragons bishop did you see this thing <laughs> um not quite a dungeon well actually you can play a t-rex or if you're a druid you can turn into a t-rex in dungeons and dragons so okay another it, free association possible. question current <laughs> favorite animal oh you know uh, this is i I'm a sucker for dogs, Nothing you know, like the, the more, I mean, I, I love all animals, um, but, you know, there's just something about that bond with a dog, you know, I like, I love my cat, but she's kind of my roommate, you know, she does her own thing on her own time and she comes and talks to me when she wants to and, you know, but and she doesn't do her dishes you know. just like every roommate alive. <laughs> she does not, but, uh, do you own chickens? Because we, <laughs> Chickens are cool. You, you don't chickens own any cool. of them, no? I don't own they're, any chickens. Because they're, they're dinosaurs. dinosaurs. They're di bro, they're dinosaurs. I, so here's why. <laughs> Mostly because when we have days where it gets down to like minus 17 here, I'm yeah. pretty sure I'd bring the chickens in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, let's I mean, walk we do it all the time in Wisconsin. Let's, we have you put diapers outside. on them, don't you? You put the, the diapers on them and... Boom, no. no, no, that's <laughs> not a thing, Dan. All right, so I'm a veteran. I go to your website, black dot black dog. Wow, blackopsrescue.org. I'm up the top mm -hmm. toolbar, super easy to read. I click on apply for a pet. I read over and I start putting my information in and tell you what I look for. You get the application. Mm -hmm. What happens? So as soon as we get the application, um, we call the veteran within a couple of days. And we kind of assess what it is that they're looking for. And then we'll set up a time for a home inspection and an interview. And that's when our adoption team will go out and they'll meet the veteran. They'll see the home environment. They'll make sure it's a safe environment for a pet. They'll check the, the yard fencing. If there is yard fencing, you know, if it's an apartment, they'll look for uh, any, they'll look to make sure it's an appropriate environment for a pet. And that's when we really drill down on what it is that they're looking for also. So we have a very detailed questionnaire that we're not necessarily looking for particular breeds. Um, and we ask our veterans to, you know, unless they have their absolutely heart set on something, we ask more for temperament. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of, you know, do you want a Velcro dog? Do you want a, a couch potato? Do you want a dog that's going to, you know, help you to be more active and get out more? Do you want um, a cat that can tolerate living with children if you have children in the house? Um, all of those kind of details. What kind of hair coat are you looking for? Can you deal with a, a pet that has regular grooming needs? Are you capable of dealing with a pet that might have a behavioral need like separation anxiety? 
um, can you deal with a medical issue? You know, if we were to find you a, a tripod, is that something that, you know, would work well in your household? So we're really drilling down on exactly what it is that they're looking for. Um, and one of our adoptions, we always have an adoption team that goes out. So it's always someone with some sort of animal experience in their background, whether that's they're a longtime pet owner or they've worked in a shelter for a long time, but they have sort of a good basic knowledge of animal welfare. And then there's always a veteran on the team too, because what we've discovered that's is a lot of times veterans will only open up to other veterans. Mm -hmm. And particularly the veterans that reach out to us, um, not all, but the majority of our clients do have some issues with either post-traumatic stress disorder, maybe they have some, some physical or mental disabilities, maybe they are kind of socially isolated because of hypervigilance. So we always want to make sure that there's a veteran there who understands what they've been through and that hopefully they can open up and, and talk to them a little bit more. So that's done. We've got their interview. We know what they're looking for. We've completed their home inspection. We also run a criminal background check on everybody just to make sure that it's a safe environment for a pet. Some of our veterans do have some, some stuff in their background, but what I'm really looking for is anything that's violence related because we may deny based on that. Most of them don't have anything that's violence related though. A lot of them have have stuff that might be uh, related to their transition out of military life and into civilian life. And just that sort of, you know, they go into boot camp for six weeks, but then when they get out, there's, there's nothing to help them transition back into civilian life. So they might have some stuff, we'll look at that. And then once that's complete and passed, then we start working our network of rescue and shelter partners. We start, we've interviewed the client. Now we're going out and we're interviewing the pets. So we, the team goes out and they start looking for that perfect match for that particular veteran. Um, and we work with shelters and rescues all up and down the front range. And usually we manage to find something that's, that's gonna be a great fit will take care of any medical needs that they may have. So if they are unspayed or unneutered, we'll take care of that before they go home to their veteran. Um, we'll take care of any medical needs. We have a, a little, actually a toy poodle right now who's who's waiting on her dental. Uh, she's she's with her veteran since the dental was scheduled a few weeks out, but we're gonna take care of that for him in a, in a few weeks. Um, and we, get it on the calendar. We, sh we get all the supplies together, take care of all that medical stuff. And then we show up, like I said, like Santa Claus with the pet oh, and with cool. all of their stuff that they could possibly need. Because especially for that first sort of three week period, we don't want the veteran to have to think about anything other than bonding with their pet. So we're bringing them a giant bag of food. You know, we're bringing them the leashes and collars. You know, you don't, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to order anything on Amazon. You've got everything you need. Your job, especially for this first three weeks, is to bond with your new pet. Do you have any of the dogs that have gone through training and are now service dogs for these veterans? We don't, but we do have some partner organizations that are that do train service dogs. So if a veteran reaches out to us and says, hey, I want a dog that can become a service dog, dog we factor that in. And then we'll hook them up with one of the service dog organizations that we work with so that they can go on and complete that training themselves. That is an area that we would love to, to branch out into um, as we grow. But right now, most of our, our dogs um, and cats are our companion animals and or emotional support animals. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of veterans don't understand the, the difference. A lot of people, I think, just don't understand the difference. No. <laughs> yeah. You guys know. <laughs> I don't want to minimize uh, what I'm about to say, because I think it's amazing. It's almost like you're a broker in the aspects of like, you collect all this information that is like, in a sense that is so valuable and utilizing the skills that you have to then turn the information that you gather from the visit, from the application from the understanding the person and then taking the experience, the wealth of knowledge that you have, go, 
it sounds like you kind of like go to shelters and then find the animal that way. Like you, you kind of like, like now you're like, you, it's almost like not that you're shopping for yourself, but you're kind of like, you know, there's a little bit of a, probably a reward just seeing all the different animals and spending time with them doing interacts, meet and greets. Right. Um, and then saying like, okay, like I found the right one uh, for that veteran. Is that kind of how, like how it works in that aspect? That is kind of how it works. Uh, we, we actually, we think of ourselves as like a matchmaking service more, yeah, yeah. you know, broker though, kind of that works too. But yeah, we think of ourselves as like a matchmaking service, you know, we're going to go find the best fit for you. And it's really nice for me too, having worked in shelters for as long as I did, you know, I get to maintain those connections. I get to maintain those relationships. And, you know, if I'm on an adoption team, then yeah, I get to go, I get to go meet the dogs, meet the cats and kind of keep my, my toe in the water that way too. Well, I'm so happy for you. I think this is a amazing, just an amazing uh, like operation and an, an amazing necessity in our communities. And, and I hope more people will uh, donate, more people will follow, more people will get involved and, and you can continue to provide this because as we know, uh, these veterans, I think it's, it's easy to say it on paper. Oh, well, they just, they, you know, they went to, the, you know, they were in the army or something like they literally have right. been protecting our freedom for hundreds of years and, and we owe a lot to them. So thank you to all of our veterans. Great. I want to get that out there. I think that's really important. And thank you for doing what you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. It's been great to talk to you today. Yeah, you bet. Bishop, what do you got? I just want to say that I'm excited for you guys being able to potentially expand. And I hope that other areas, like anybody else that's interested in, um, you know, providing a service, it, would you be willing to have people reach out if they want to say, you know, re start an organization like that somewhere else to branch out and can they reach out to you and get yeah, in contact and find out how to do it? <laughs> <laughs> like a franchise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I mean, one of our huge tenets is is cooperation. Um, the more we all work together, the more people and pets that we can help. So mm -hmm. yeah, if if other organizations around the country, you know, wanted to reach or other people around the country kind of wanted to reach out to me and sort of see how we did what we did and how it's working and you know, I'm, I'm happy to share whatever knowledge and skills I can with anybody who, who wants to help people and help veterans. That's awesome. Well, again, for our listeners, I mean, I think it's important that they, you know, they can- We got to know the puppy now. Oh, there, okay. You do that while I read the website, <laughs> blackopsrescue.org. And we were talking about it offline before you got on, Bishop. Uh, I, I said puppy too, but uh, Kelly, can you- just give uh, <laughs> yeah so um as you guys know when you when you work in shelter environments taking a lot of animals home is kind of an occupational hazard <laughs> so behind me you see benny uh benny is an old man he's at least 12 um he is pretty much deaf at this point and and mostly blind um but is is still kind of full of piss and vinegar can i say that on a <laughs> podcast oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you can say whatever you want on this podcast. Uh, hey, he got yeah, up on and, that chair for being blind. He got up on there pretty darn good. <laughs> he knows his way around. He knows his way around. So, and I, I definitely have a, so a soft spot for the older animals for sure. So he's my That's Velcro dog. With Dan. Has... <laughs> wow. You know, it's funny though, as, as we sat here for, you know, a while on the show and, and kind of watching the cat was there for the majority of the show. And then it's like, all right, I'm out. And then... There he goes. He's like, all right, I know the cat's off. It's my turn. And he, <laughs> yep. he just wants to be closer to the dinosaur, I think is what's going on. <laughs> yeah, the, the cat's definitely in charge. The cat's absolutely in charge. She decides. She's the decider. <laughs> totally. Well, Kelly, as always, thank you. You're always a friend of the show. If you ever have anything you want to promote, uh, whether you want us to to read about it or, you know, we can talk about it on the show if you want to come back on, if you're doing a, an event, send us the info. We'll happily share that mm -hmm. with our, whether it's on our right. social social media pages and, and here on the show. Uh, you know, we're, we're here as a community. You know, we want to help uh, just the community of animal welfare and, and, and helping people. And I think uh, we can only do that by, you know, continuing to offer 
support outside of just today, right? So uh, you are what we would consider a friend of the show. You're more than welcome to, you know, come back on and, and you know, just get out the word however you can. So thank you for doing the awesome work that you're doing. Thank you for taking the time out today to be on the program. Absolutely. And thank you guys for what you do. I think you're really helping to kind of break down some of those very old school negative stereotypes around people who do animal control work. Um, and I think that's that's really important, again, to sort of getting us all on the same page to, to help more animals. Well, as always, to our listeners, please check out our website, keepithumane.com. Please check out our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok pages, either Animal Control Report or Keep It Humane, both. We have them all. And like, share, rate the podcast. Uh, there'll be some new merchandise coming soon, so check that out. Please um, please submit your animal control-related um, stuff that you want to be um, just recognized for during the week of Animal Control Officer Appreciation Week, which is like April 14th through the 20th or something like that, if I can do math right. Uh, we're, you know, we're out there collecting it now. So get it to us as soon as you can. And Bishop, take it away. And everybody would like to remind you to uh, keep, uh, no, oh my God, Dan. Yes, let's go. Now, now <laughs> it's not just me making these. It's, it's because I work with you. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, and see now Mooney's excited. So thank you for listening. Help, continue to help people. <laughs> help animals <laughs> and keep it humane <laughs> we'll get there <laughs> we got there <laughs> oh good grief kelly 